just shut that idiot box yes. off. Amen. Yes. And you're going to run to the King of Kings. And you're going to run to the Lord of glory. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When we were called down here, we were called down with the spirit of Elijah. What is the spirit of Elijah? The spirit of Elijah is a spirit that turns the hearts of the fathers That's to the right. children That's so that right. the hearts of the children can be turned to the Father. Right. Amen. We need a culture-shaking revival Amen. to turn the hearts of the fathers Amen. to the children Amen. so that the hearts of the children can be turned to the Father. Yes. And the way you do it, glory to God, is first of all, you don't divide the land of Israel. That's right. Amen. You don't divide the land of Israel. Amen. Thank you, Lord God. Amen. Hallelujah. If you could, turn in your Bibles to the book of Zechariah. The book of Zechariah. Thank you, Lord God. There's a reason why you don't divide the land of Israel. Yes, sir. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord God. Yes, sir. Thank you, Lord God. God will deal with Israel. Yes, yes. Amen. When the when when the tribulation happens, the reason for the tribulation is two reasons. One, God's judging the nations of the earth. Number two. It's all about Israel receiving Jesus yes, as their Messiah. Yes, right. Amen. Israel on a corporate level, on a national level, needs to receive Jesus as their Messiah. Yes. And when they do, we will all tithe to Jesus. Amen. We will all tithe to Israel. Amen. They have been ordained to be the king of the earth. Yes. And when you worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Glory, supernatural blessing and supernatural strength yes, sir. pour out on your behalf. Yes, sir. Amen. Are you all with me? Ezekiel chapter 12. Yes, sir. And we're going to start in verse 8. Thank you, Lord God. It says, In that day the Lord shall defend the inhabitants of Jerusalem. And he that is feeble among them, among them that day shall be as David. And the house of David shall be as God, as the angel of the Lord before them. And it shall come to pass that in that day that I will seek to destroy all nations that come against Jerusalem. Amen. Don't destroy Jerusalem. Yes, no. Don't divide the land of Israel. That's right. Amen. What I have in my hand is I have a book by David <coughs> Brannan. And it says here, the Israel Omen. And in this book, he gives a list of coincidences that have happened since 1991. And what I want to do is I want to read you some of these coincidences that have happened since 1991 as a direct result of our policy our change policies towards Israel. Come on. October 30th, 1991. The Madrid Middle East Peace Conference opens its doors and it's a breakthrough that gets the warring parties talking. That's Israel and the PLO with the ultimate goal of removing large portions of the promised land. The worst perfect storm strikes the bewildered New England coast, described by weather experts as a once in a hundred year freak. So this is what happened. They had the they had the conference over in the over in Madrid, Spain. President H. Bush, the first one, is flying back. He's got a house in Maine, right on the beach. He comes home and he finds his furniture floating out in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean as a result of this conference. Mm -hmm. Don't divide the land of Israel. Amen. 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 August 24th, 1992. Round 6 of the Minis Peace effort begins in Washington, D.C. with a, Israel, a new Israeli leader, Rabin, at the helm. For the first time, land for peace the effort has a friend on the Israeli side, and significant pro progress is made. In other words, uh, Rabin is now their uh, president, and he wants to give away some of Israel's land. <coughs> Hurricane Andrew, the fourth most powerful storm ever to make landfall in the U.S., strikes and devastates 
the Florida coast, becoming the most expensive natural disaster up to that time in U.S. history. Why? Because of our wrong decisions concerning the land of Israel. Let's jump forward a little bit. September 10th, 2001. Y'all remember 911, right? Mm -hmm. September 10th, 2001. <coughs> the, the week the Bush White House was ready for the big rollout of the major change in the U.S. Middle East peace policy, becoming the, becoming the first U.S. administration to support a Palestinian state on a large part of the promised land. Wow. The next day, for the first time since Pearl Harbor, the U.S. was successfully attacked by a foreign enemy in a devastating assault that you know as 911. The Twin Towers came down. October 23rd, 2005. Painful removal of U.S. citizens from a large portion of the Promised Land is declared officially completed. The Gaza Strip is abandoned. The next week, wait, that day, the Depression started in the Atlantic. The next week, Hurricane Katrina hit, and you know the rest of the story. Louisiana is devastated, all because of America's decisions concerning the Middle East. Coincidence? I think not. <laughs> the week of July 23, 2007, former British Prime Minister Tony Blair begins his first trip to the Middle East as a quartet envoy, ultimately leading to the Annapolis Conference where the world begins a renewed effort to pressure the Jews to give up large portions of the promised land for a Palestinian state. The world financial system suffers a critical breakdown, bringing it to the brink of a seismic meltdown. And you know what happened after that. You got bailout, starting with Bush, going on to our present president, after bailout, after bailout, and here we are at the brink. We are at the brink of something traumatic happening in this nation all because of our decisions concerning Israel. 